Hey, YouTube. Hey, I, I hope that uh, y'all had a, a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. I, I know the little colonel and I did, and uh, right now I'm, I'm taking advantage of a long weekend to kind of uh, get organized here in the gear room. <laughs> like, that's going to happen. Uh, but uh, uh, the reason why we're here today is, is that we all kind of know that I'm a, I'm a hammock geek, and uh, I'm also a kind of a history geek. And uh, had a, something come to the uh, the eighth annual Texas Hang that we uh, had just a couple weeks ago that got me real. They got the hi history geek in me excited and the hammock geek in me excited. Uh, Uncle Mike brought out a spear snug fit under quilt uh, and uh, announced it on uh, on the Facebook page that he was bringing it that got me interested and also got paul mcwalters from underground quilt from ugq ugq outdoors uh interested in it as well uh and i decided to shoot a little video about this and uh let you all know the history of it got a bunch of old farts together uh, a couple of people that have been around this hammock stuff longer than I have. They're not older than I am. That's awful hard to do these days, find somebody older than me hanging around. But these are guys who've been around. Rat, who you, uh, who you will see in this, uh, this video, uh, he has been around hammock camping since uh, the only thing that you could get on the internet as far as hammock camping was, was a Yahoo group. And I'll post a link up to that down in the comment section so you can go, because uh, it's still open for research, okay? But what we're talking about here is the Spear Snug Fit Underquilt. It is the first purpose-built underquilt. In other words, this is the first piece of gear that can only be used on a hammock, okay, as far as under-insulation is concerned. Uh, we'll talk, you listen in the video, there's a little bit more about that, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. But for right now, let's just take a look at a bunch of old farts looking at a piece of gear. Okay, so what we've done here is we have assembled uh, several old farts, none of them older than me, but uh, people who've been around longer than I have, to talk about this hammock. Paul McWalters, who uh, is the only expert we have. Uh, use that word loosely. Yeah, use that word loosely. <laughs> and uh, Randy from Dream Hammocks is here, and, and Rat, who was featured in last year's uh, hammock hang video with his 10 segrity stand, which is where this hammock and underquilt reside currently. Uh, I want to make one point. This hammock, this Yukon hammock that is here, is not part of the underquilt. But the underquilt fits on it in such a way that it looks like it is. So we're going to have to navigate around that a little bit. But uh, what I want to do is get Paul to come in here and point out some areas of construction that make this hammock, this this quilt, unique. Go ahead, Paul. All right, howdy, folks. Uh, I'm Paul with UGQ Outdoor Equipment, and we make our own version of an underquilt. But this here is the Spear Snug Fill. Fit, snug fit. And from my research, this appears to be one of the first true underquilts for hammocks. Prior to that, people were using um, large top quilt rectangular blankets and hanging them, modifying them to work underneath hammocks. And Spear also had a product called the Pea Pod and the Winter Pea Pod that was previous to this. From my research, this appeared to come out in late 2007, early 2008. Uh, first quilt to feature a differential construction from what I can find. Um, first quilt to be a dedicated underquilt to serve as that function. And if you look at it, it's got a lot of uh, construction techniques that are used today as well. The outside has little fold over pleats down the side to absorb the differential. The differential being the outer shell, the green, is longer than the theoretical inner shell the gray on today's underquilts, but on this one, the gray's actually been used as kind of almost like a hammock body. A real interesting concept. It's not a hammock, it's an underquilt, but the construction's almost like an insulated hammock. Then on the outside, they've also got shaping darts, okay? And these are to add curvature. Um, I'm not, uh, we use this detail on our, on our ambush 
line, but I'm not aware of anybody who uses this on a traditional gathered and under quilt today. And on the inside, if you can see that, they use uh, shaping pleats. And this is to absorb fabric uh, where the, the underquilt typically drops away from the user and you might get cold butt syndrome. And this is the snug fit. This feature is what gives it a snug fit. So, so we've got, we've got uh, stitching here that makes the channels. And then we've got additional pleats which pulls it up against your butt. Is yeah. that? Yes, that's what the intention of these pleats is to, to shape the inner shell of the underquilt to suck it up to the bottom of the hammock. And so at the time... Without compressing the insulation. Without without compressing. That's, the, that's yeah. the trick, yeah. Absolutely revolutionary at the time. Uh, and my further research on this particular quilt uh, is that the baffles on the torso are taller than the baffles on the foot. And if, you, if we look at this quilt from the exterior, this appears to be deeper, and then this appears to sh narrow up again and you'll see that feature actually on some of today's modern quilts that you'll look at the quilt and it appears to have this shape and if you look at this one from the backs from a distance it appears to have that similar shape so again at the time this was made an absolutely innovative feature on an underquilt Talk, talked about the different depth of the baffles this is the torso end of the quilt and they're a deeper baffle and this is the foot end of the quilt and they're a shallower baffle the baffles how all the quilt is in this area so here where the body is you're you're deep and then here where the leg is you can kind of see it step up I, I noticed the uh, the tabs here and, and what was that function well spear made two versions of this they made the one that fit the spear hammock which mm -hmm. had velcro on it so it could velcro to the matching velcro on the hammock mm -hmm. and then this was the universal and the purpose of this was to allow you to run shock cord through this so this wasn't flopping around. Okay. And you could put it on any hammock at that point. The suspension, there, there is no shock cord suspension like with a lot of today's modern quilts. Right. The suspension is an elastic mesh. So on the, on the suspension end where today's traditional under quilts use a shock cord system running through channels on both sides, uh, the Spear Snug Fit has a, what's called a two-way elastic fabric sewn all the way across. There's, there's very little stretch in this direction, but in the direction of use, there's a stretch. Uh, and what's really neat about that is instead of just applying pressure here and applying pressure here on the quilt to lift it, it pulls on the entire quilt across the entire width in a uniformed fashion and helps snug that under quilt up. Mm -hmm. That's the name snug, snug fit. I mean, fit. It was yeah. appropriate. So um, there's no other manufacturer that's ever used this process. Hmm. So it's definitely a, a unique uh, piece of uh, suspension technology. Uh, even from pleating this fabric to shape yeah. it, uh, it definitely was unique and, and very effective at, at what it did. Uh, let me ask you the question. <clears throat> Why don't we see quilts like this on the market today? In, in this version, to replicate this quilt, it's a very complex build. Um, while a lot of these design ideas have been used uh, you know, in uh, other underquilts that are available on the market, to replicate this exactly as it stands, the processes and the techniques, um, it's just an expensive quilt to build. It's very labor intensive. It's very labor intensive. There, there's so much detail work into just putting, uh, there's, there's pleats in the spandex, there's, there's pleats down here, uh, there's pleats up here that I, I have no idea what these pleats are I, doing. I, I noticed that, this one that looks like a channel, it almost looks like a knotty mod, mod of some sort. Uh, uh, that, that's up in here. Yeah. Uh, Rat was saying it looked like maybe a channel went here and came back around and helped to form the it end. Very well, may have. You been. know, uh, without more information, we won't. But we are going to research this a little bit more. Uh, now, would you say this being what we what we assume is what we what we're fairly confident is the very first purpose built. Underquilt. The first thing was said, this is for a hammock and nothing else. The features that are in this particular underquilt 
you would see one or more of them in just about any commercial underquilt out there. A lot of these features you do see in today's commercial okay. underquilt. So this is this is pioneering work here. Yeah. This is like the Mercury space capsule. Their, uh, their use of uh, shaping uh, darts and pleats is pretty much standard practice. If you look at almost any modern underquilt today, mm -hmm. it has sharp shaping pleats and darts to shape that underquilt to make it fit the hammock. And this, this is where we went away from rectangular quilts to shaped quilts. Mm -hmm. Correct. There are still rectangular quilts on the market, mm -hmm. uh, but the techniques used to shape this quilt are still being used today. And that, that makes for a better fit yes. and, and, and warmer nights. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This was actually, um, from my research, manufacturing stopped in 2010 because it was a cost prohibitive product to make. Okay. And I believe they sold out the last of their inventory in 2011, early 2011. So this is uh, this is a classic. Uh, you rarely see them for sale right. on right. the forums. Um, and when they do come up for sale, they're not for sale for very long. Right. Right. They're yeah. usually sold. The ones I've I've only seen two, and they usually are sold in a private party transaction. Yeah. It's like this is this is the history between people who actually know. Correct. You know, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, I offered Mike a thousand bucks for this, and he wouldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that on tape, you know. I know you do. I know you do. Okay. No. It's right. fun to see, um, you know, a lot of people who only have just started hammock camping. They've not been in the industry very, in the, 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 the hobby or the passion or the lifestyle very long. Um, and they don't realize that it has a past and there is a history. Um, mm -hmm. And all the benefits we receive from today's wonderful hammocks made by Dream Hammock mm -hmm. um, or the underquilts that are out there or top quilts that are out there. Uh, are all a direct descendant of these types of products. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy that this showed up here at The Hang, uh, is because uh, we don't want to lose touch with what went on before us. There, there are so many people out there who think that they have just thought of a brand new idea. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that, and congratulations for them for even thinking. But a good deal of it has been done before. Uh, well, well, there's been many things throughout history that have been done Unlost. And lost. And, and then, then redone, redone again. Yeah. Yeah. And rediscovered. Yeah. Well, that's what was great about Ed Spear was he was such a pioneer, but he was so open with that. I mean, he wrote the book and said, hey, man, I, I love hammock camping. I sell hammocks. But in the book, he's like, here's how you can make your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just yeah. want you to get out there and do it. We have a copy it, of that know? book here, too. Yeah, we have a copy of the book. I'll get a shot Jackson. of it before and I leave. The whole and, DIY okay. and hammocking, I mean, he was like, the godfather of that you know yeah. it's like i want you to go out there and build it yourself and do it yourself and you know forge new trails when it when it comes to this hobby and this style of camping and you know we see it now with so many manufacturers and you know like you said this was so far ahead of its time you know we were just crawling off the ground mm -hmm. and still using camping pads and, and car window windshield reflectors and things like that to stay warm and ed was like man there's a better way not only there's a better way but i'm going to show you exactly how i do it so y'all can go out there and do it yourself. So it was mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. well, the first printing of the book was 2003. 2003, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. 13, yeah. 13 years ago. Yeah. So, so even he he made the book in 2003. There's a history prior to the book that we don't know. That we don't know, yeah. Right. But you you see guys like, you know, one of the guys I learned so much stuff on was I am Risk, and every single article, every single thing he did referenced back to the book, back to the book. You know, even from how to lay out you know the fabric and stuff mm -hmm. to get the cuts you need mm -hmm. he would anchor the the corners down with the book i mean it was always about yeah. you know hey ed spear is doing this we're we're copying what he's doing and he's loving it and we all do it and now just you know it's such a huge industry not just for you know guys like y'all but for the diy guys yeah yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. uh so great great piece of history here and uh an, an excellent product and even in today's market it, it would still be a competitive uh, performing product. I, yeah, I, I look at it almost like a Rolls Royce where everybody is buying, uh, you know, if, if this product was available, it would be available as a Rolls Royce as opposed to the Chevrolets and Lincolns. That, that, it would that, be considered yeah. a higher end product. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so. Absolutely, no doubt. This one has 900, 900 fill in it. So 900 I mean, fill. They were yeah. using high end down in it. Um, at the time, the, the fabrics, uh, this was a 30 down year 1.1, which at the time this was manufactured was a high-end fabric. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they definitely were putting out a, a quality product. Okay, now this is, this is Chris Mullins and Mike Mullins 
Chris owns this copy of Ed Spears book this, a lot of people think Derek Hansen wrote the book on uh, hammock camping no disrespect to Derek but he's the second guy it's the most modern book Ed Spear wrote the first the copyright date on this book is 2003 it was printed in 2009 and I gotta tell you Chris has kept excellent care of it Chris is also the second owner of that hammock we just looked at Mike is the present owner of the Spear snug fit hammock and there are a lot of people around this parts right now trying to talk him out of it. Did you know that Paul just made a thousand dollar offer on that hammock? He's getting closer. He's getting closer? Closer. Okay, all right, We're in the same park now. We're I'm not sure what kind of ballpark, but okay. same park. Beautiful. Okay, well, you, first off, thanks for saving the thing. Thanks for not giving it away or, or putting it someplace where it's going to get rotten. Thanks for keeping track of the book, and thanks for standing up here and letting me talk to you. You bet. Anytime, right. Sarge. Talk to you later. You bet. Well, there you go. Now I did a little bit more research on that when after he got home from the hang, and uh, at the time that the snug fit was uh, uh, put on the market, there were two other companies, uh, two other cottage vendors, uh, selling underquilts under insulation. Okay, uh, one is a company that's no longer in business; the other is uh, Jacks Are Better. Okay. Uh, and what Jax was selling at the time was just a repurposed top quilt, okay? Uh, it wasn't shaped at all. It was just another piece of gear. It would be similar to what we're doing with the Costco down blanket, okay? Piece of gear that's not really intended for the use of what we're doing it. We, we modify it. Uh, the Spear Snug Fit is the first one that came out that is hammock specific, okay and that the only way you can use it is with a hammock okay uh, and that is it uses all the the pleats and the darts and the baffles to shape it into the shape that you will be in once you get in that hammock okay now in, in that way it's more like the improved Costco down quilt that we did this is, this is where we learned how to put darts in in quilts under quilts to shape them so that they can form to the hammock okay now I'll tell you uh, uh, I'm kind of challenged by this I can see where uh, I might be able to come up with a way to uh, use the Costco down quilts uh, in a way that it would mimic the performance of the uh, uh, snug fit but boy like Paul said it's a that's a hard tough build I don't know if I if I can uh, if I can uh, put all that together and uh, make any sense out of it. So we'll see about that in the future. Uh, got a couple more videos coming out uh, uh, that we're taking it to hang. Got a couple of what I'm going to call mini reviews. And, and then uh, uh, there's another one about you know, basically uh, hijinks and falderall and foolishness. Uh, but, you know, you never see that kind of thing on this channel. In the meantime, we'll see you down the trail.